Hello everybody, my name is Mattia Chiappa. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sorry for not being able to share much lately, but I'm gonna be stuck at home for a while. So I guess you're gonna be seeing a little bit more of me. The other day I was messing around on the piano and I came up with this simple melodic idea, which seemed flexible enough to be orchestrated a bunch of different ways. So I made 20 different variations, which if you like, you can take away and use in your own compositions. This is gonna be a true parts video, so Stick around for the second half if you enjoyed the first. That being said, let's dive right into it with number one. So before we talk about the orchestration, let's talk about the composition a little bit, because it's really quite simple and I think it's important in order to understand the why I'm making some of the choices. So this is the melody, right? Which can be harmonized a bunch of different ways, but specifically for this example, I've played just really three chords, just C major, G, B flat and then back to C. So now what you'll see me doing throughout the video is reharmonizing this melody a bunch of different ways in order to fit the mood of the orchestration. But this is not really gonna be informed by the orchestrations because these two things go together. For example, I'm going to show you later on uh, like a romantic kind of thing, which usually as part of the language, you tend to have this kind of chords, right? I'm not going to be trying to, to deviate from that. I mean, that's going to be always my starting point. And then you can develop things further, but always try to start from a familiar kind of place, you know, in order to connect with your audience and the people. That being said, let's talk about this example a little bit. Um, the main part is the strings, really. You have this kind of, you know, arpeggiation going on on the cellos. And the um, um, viola is going in contrary motion. And they have two different rhythms because they're not meant to stick out. It's just meant to provide some, you know, color uh, hiding behind the melody and the chord pads underneath. which are basically just playing the same chord voicings as uh, violas and cellos and some pizzicatos on the bass just to add a little bit more movement. You have harp as well on top of it just to lay down the chords, some sim really simple rules. nice, you know, um, symbols well, but just right before that. And I decided to start with this one because it's probably the simplest one and, and I thought, you know, it would be a really good starting point. Let's move to the second one. This comes second because it's similar to the first one in a way. I mean, it's much slower, but I'm pretty much using the same chords as I used before, right? But being like a slower pastoral sort of version, I decided to 
orchestrated differently, of course. And here, providing the chords on the bottom, we mostly have bass, cellos, and um, lower woodwinds. I'm going to show you in a second. Now I'm using the low woodwinds rather than the brass as, before, as I used before in order to just add a little bit more warmth but if I decide to mute them it's going to make quite a big difference. Not that it needs to sound full all the time but for this sort of context it's, I felt like it was like important to put them there. On top of it, just to fill out the chords a little bit more, um, I have violins and flutes. Flutes, though, this time, are going to be really low in the register because same concept applies as before. They're not really supposed to stick out that much because it's just like providing a little bit extra color to uh, the orchestration. And now we have solo horn taking the melody, being uh, doubled by violas playing tremolos. And again, as before, just harp playing some really gentle roles. Let's move to the third one. So this is very different and for this I was thinking fun. And for me, like to have that fun sort of quality, you'd have to really harmonize it in a sort, certain way. And that, uh, in my opinion at least, comes from like a dominant kind of sound. The most important parts are the harp together with the flute. And the rest of the woodwinds are playing some trills. We have on the percussion a uh, triangle. And strings are doing different things. On top of it, we have some chords just to glue all these things down. I mean, it's not really important. You wouldn't really miss them if they weren't there. It's just pro providing a little bit extra color. And then pizzicatas. I forgot to mention the, glo the glockenspiel, which is now doubling the flute. On the second half of the melody, it's doubling all of it, but on the very beginning, it's just hitting the most important chord tones. So let's hear the whole thing. I was gonna have melody on the French horn but it had to sound you know bright and powerful so I needed it to be in the in its best registers which is you know which goes from F to F really and so I just moved the melody from uh, C major to F to B flat sorry mm -hmm. 
Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, the chords are going to be slightly different. Most important elements are the French horn, as we said before, which is doubled by cellos, just to make it a little bit more powerful. And then you have these measured trims on top of it, being doubled by Celeste. Just to have that glassy sort of top end. Brass join in the build for the very last chord, and that's pretty much it. And of course, Piatti right here at the end. Together with the cymbals well and the timpani roll. At the end, there's a nice phrase here on the violins being doubled by flutes and oboes. That's it. I've changed the key again to G because I knew I wanted this sort of march uh, to be played by trombones and uh, trumpets but if they were to play too high in their register they would pretty much overpower everything else so yeah I moved it to G Chords are slightly different from before. I mean, really simple stuff. Just G, F, C major seven uh, with B flat. C. I mean, I guess it's a C major nine with E on the bottom, and then E major seven, F, G, and then you have this sort of march pattern going on. So, uh, I mean, it's important to have the snare drum together with the timpanis and uh, some piates. The melody, as I said before, is being provided by trumpets and trombones. The accompaniment is being provided by basically strings and woodwinds and percussions, but let, let me isolate strings and woodwinds. I mean, yeah, a nice run at the end, just to make a build a little bit more, and that's it. Also, I forgot to talk about this. It's a this is a really common kind of doubling. You have oftentimes glockenspiel, tubular bells, and piano. And is I tend to use it. I mean, not me. Just really the common, the usual way this is done is for accents. Let's move to the next one, number six. For this one, I wanted it to sound sweet 
So I've used some suspensions in the quads. I've talked about this orchestration before. You have this pulsating sort of element. Which is being provided by harp, vibraphone and horns together. And on top of all that, we have some chords on the strings. And the cello is also providing like a little counter line kind of thing. And again, um, a little bit of low woodwinds at the end, just to provide a little bit of reinforcement. Now, number seven is very different. So when you want to have that mysterious sort of sound, you tend to layer uh, Celeste with something else on top of it. In this case, it's gonna be violins. Let's have a listen. And on the bottom end, I wanted to have the menacing sort of sound, so I've used some rolls on the percussions, which might be a little bit unusual. together with the bass. And you also have the, cel the cello and harp together providing some appreciation. And clarinets. It may seem like a lot, but the important thing is when you have these dense sort of orchestrations is to leave the melody register untouched so that it can still ring out and not layer everything on top of each other. So let me show you. See this big hole over here? That's the melody register. I mean, I guess it is a little bit denser than it should be, but still, it, it doesn't really get too dense up until the very end, uh, which is fine, I guess, because we're down with the melody there, which is now being passed to the flutes who take that run at the end. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's have another listen. And again, same trick as before, I've saved the brass for the second half of it because brass are probably the most powerful instrument in the orchestra and if you save them, 
It can be helpful in order to create drama. Yeah, I mean, there isn't much to say about this. Uh, I'm just playing with the usual stuff. Like, usually you tend to create comedy with, you know, pizzicato strings and tuba and bassoons and things to tend to sound funny when the move to either the very top of the register or the very bottom. And, you know, this is just an example of it. And these are like some common doublings. You have some oboes, shorts, uh, playing some chromatic stuff. And yeah, I mean, there's a little counter line going on here on the piccolo, which is being doubled on the xylophone, of course, and bassoons and bass clarinet is being doubled one octave below by tuba and of course i mean you have some you ha you had to have some pizzicato strings that's it Yeah, I really like this sort of things. And this is the one I mentioned before. So it's C major to C augmented to A minor 9 and then D half diminished. So you have those chords being arpeggiated by the clarinets, similar to what we had before. Sorry, I forgot to I forgot the bassoon, so it's clarinets and bassoons being doubled on the um, celeste as well. The melody is being taken by high strings in octaves and oboes, doubling on the lowest one. The accompaniment is being provided by brass and violas tremolos. And in the meantime, you have some arpeggiations or counter lines going on on the cellos. And for the bass, just pizzicato contra basses. Number 10, almost done. The most important elements for this is brass in general. Um, the melody is being taken by the French horns again. I mean, I've been using them a lot. And you have these chords on top of it on the trumpets, some counter lines going on uh, on the trombones and the tuba, and the rest is just doublings, pretty much either in octaves or in the same register. Let me let me play the brass for you. I want to mute for a second the trumpets so that you can hear the counter melodies that we were talking about before. In terms of doublings, I'm using flutes to double the melody, to octaves up, uh, clarinets to double the melody again in the same register, oboes to soften the sound of the trumpets a little bit, and then bassoons doubling the bass trombones, I guess. Let's have a listen to the woodwinds. The 
percussion is just playing accents. Let's have a quick listen again. So there we go. Before we wrap it up, I need to make a very quick announcement. People have been asking me for project files and PDF scores and to see my piano sketches and stuff like that. So I've opened the Patreon page because I figured I needed a place specifically designed for these kind of things. I don't know if you might be interested, but I've put a link in the description below. I mean, it's very affordable, it's nothing too crazy, and of course it's gonna help me a great deal as well. I really hope you enjoyed the video and stick around for part two if you want to check out the other orchestrations I made. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have some suggestions or you want me to talk about something more specific the next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.